So if you caught my last video, we were talking about the rumors and speculation on the Bulls trying to get into the Damian Lillard mix, and in that video I explained why the Bulls should not be pushing for a trade that would net them Dame, and why the Bulls shouldn't want that either, given the fact that it's going to cost a considerable amount of assets, including Zach Levine, young players, potentially draft picks, and for a player who, yes, is a superstar, but is also in his mid-30s and still has over $200 million left on his deal. But that topic aside, because we talked about it enough in that video, a player that I think the Bulls should absolutely jump on who has recently hit the trade block is the Indiana Pacers buddy Heald, who Sham Sharania recently reported that extension talks between Heald and the Pacers have stalled and both sides are now working on a trade to find Buddy Heald a new home. So in this video we're going to be talking about why the Bulls should go after Heald, what he would bring to the Bulls roster and what a potential trade could look like that would work out for both the Bulls and the Pacers. So what's going on everyone? You were listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now I briefly discussed this on a video I put out yesterday on the NBA channel talking about potential suitors and destinations for Heald, and one of the teams I mentioned was the Bulls, but I wanted to go into it a little more depth on it here since, you know, this is a Bulls channel. Now, first and foremost, why Buddy Heald? Why would I be emphasizing the need for the Bulls to at least get on the phone and understand what the Pacers are seeking for him? Well, one, in case you haven't been following the Bulls for the last 1.5 seasons, they are one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the NBA, in an era of NBA basketball that is predicated on three-point shooting. Thanks, Warriors. Now, the Bulls haven't necessarily been a bad three-point shooting team when it comes to percentage at which they shoot it from three. They actually are in the middle of the road in terms of the overall shooting percentage from three, finishing 15th in the NBA last season. But the problem is the Bulls don't take very many threes. They don't have enough guys on their roster who are are high rate three point shooters. Really, you're talking about Zach Levine and to an extent Kobe White. Last season, the Bulls were dead last in three point attempts, the only team in the NBA to average less than 33s per game. And they were more than one full attempt less from the team that finished 29th in the NBA in the New Orleans Pelicans. The Bulls took 28.9 threes per game last season compared to the Pelicans 30.1. Just to point to the drastic disparity, the Warriors who took the most threes last season averaged 43.2 threes per game, over 14 more threes per game than the Bulls did. Now, we've talked about why this is a problem ad nauseum on the channel really throughout the season and the offseason. It's hard to stay in games or try and come back from a deficit when you don't shoot threes. And opposing teams are also shooting you out of games because even though the rate at which they shoot it might be lower, they might be missing more threes on the hold than the Bulls, but they're coming away with more mix because they take more which results in more points on the scoreboard. Kind of basic stuff, really. Now, of course, as we've talked about, the Bulls did address some of their shooting woes by adding Javon Carter and Torrey Craig, who most would consider to be above average three-point shooters, even though it's on lower volume. We'll have to see if they can sustain shooting it from three at a 40 plus percent clip on higher volume, which the Bulls are going to need them to do. But even with those additions, the Bulls are still going to need more three-point shooting. When you are last in the league and threes taken and you add a few low volume shooting guys, the problem hasn't been solved. It's a little bit of a band-aid, but it's not going to address the root cause of the problem. Well, in comes a guy like Buddy Heald. If you haven't been following Heald really throughout his career, then you should know that yes, he has his flaws, which I'll talk about, but he's one of the best three point shooters in the game. We're talking a top 10 three point shooter in the league, both in terms of volume, makes, and percentage. Heald shot over 42%, 42.5% actually, on 8.5 threes per game, with a true shooting percentage of 61.5%, which by the way was the best of his career from a true shooting perspective. That is insanely efficient shooting from deep. Now granted, he's maybe not the most efficient player overall on offense, he's not the best when it comes to his inside game and finishing around the rim, he does turn the ball over at a higher rate compared to his usage, and offense aside, he's also a pretty bad player on defense, so don't get me wrong, there are downsides to Buddy Heald. But if you solely look at this from a place of need for the Bulls, a player that can play on and off the ball, the fact that he's more than just a one-dimensional catch-and-shoot sharpshooter, like he's skilled enough, athletic enough to handle the ball, quick first step to slash the basket. This isn't like a trade for Duncan Robinson type situation. Heald offers more 
than just his shooting alone. Now, the question is, what would a trade look like? Do the Bulls actually have a viable path in trading for this guy? And would it be worth it where you're not giving up too much to get him? Because keep in mind, this is not a star level player that you want to give up a big haul on. Here's the thing. While I do think Heald actually has good trade value in the league because shooting is paid at a premium in the NBA, you also have to keep in mind, he's 30 years old. He'll actually be 31 in a couple of months. So it's not like you're getting some young player that you can build with and develop for the future. He's also on an expiring contract and not a cheap contract at that to where you're going to have to figure out a way to match salaries with Heald owed $20 million this upcoming season. And as great as his shooting has been, Heald hasn't really shown a lot of winning throughout his career. Not that you can really put all that on him when he's played for bad teams throughout his tenure, but the man has never been to the playoffs in his entire NBA career. And the reason I bring this up is because you're probably saying, then dude, why are you wanting to trade for this guy? I say this because the Bulls might be able to get away with landing him for cheap. Now, you also have to look at this from the perspective of the Pacers. While they have made some moves to try and start winning now, try and start building to be into eventually a contender, they're still a rebuilding team with a young core. It's part of the reason why extension talks with Heald probably didn't go so well because he's not really part of their long-term plans. And so for the Pacers, they're going to be looking for pieces and assets they can build with, whether it be picks or young and up and coming players. Now, I do wanna be clear that before I give my proposal on a trade that it is possible the Pacers could get better offers from other teams, especially some contending teams that are looking for additional offense. And if that is the case, then fine. Because while I want Heald, I do think that he would be a great fit for the Bulls. I also don't want to oversell for him and trade more than he's actually worth. The biggest hurdle for the Bulls in finding a trade that works though, is the money. Heald is gonna be making almost $20 million next season. And you have to come close to trading enough outgoing salary for the trade to actually be approved by the league. And the reason that's a challenge for the Bulls is they have their three highest paid players that could make the money work in Vucevic, Demar, and Zach Levine. But you're not gonna be trading any of those guys for Heald, that would be insane. And then you look at the rest of the roster, most of the guys on the team are making near half the amount of $20 million. So then it would be a matter of including multiple players, which then you get to the point where you're like, is it actually worth it? But there is one player, money-wise, where it could work, and maybe, just maybe, the Pacers would bite on it because of what the Bulls would also attach to it in the form of a trade. And if you haven't already guessed it, yeah, I'm talking about Lonzo Ball. Lonzo's gonna be making $20 million next season, even though he's not gonna be playing. And while there is no chance the Pacers would ever just take on Lonzo's contract with the high likelihood that it's just gonna be dead money, they would never take that on in a straight trade for Buddy Heald. But what if the Bulls threw in the first round pick from Portland. Now, I know this pick isn't as valuable as just any ordinary first round draft pick, given it's lottery protected. The Blazers are likely gonna be rebuilding after they trade Dame. It's possible that pick won't convey for a while, but it will eventually convey. And if you can get a first round pick for Buddy Heald at age 30, when you know you have to trade him anyway, the Pacers should be extremely pleased to get that kind of return. Not only that, but when it comes to Lonzo's contract, they would still get the disabled player exception from the Bulls if they choose to use that for the season. And then by next season, if he's still not showing any signs of returning, then you apply for medical retirement where you would get his salary wiped off the books completely on the final year of his deal. And of course, there is always the possibility that somehow Lonzo recovers and starts playing again and is still a great player, which that would suck and is still a very big risk for the Bulls of wanting to trade Lonzo. But if I was a betting man, my guess is Lonzo is likely not going to be coming back. And if he does, will likely not be the same player ever again. But it's still a gamble if you're the Bulls. Now, if that isn't enough for the Pacers lottery protected pick to take on a bad contract and for Buddy Heald, I think the most I would personally be okay with adding to the deal is Daylon Terry. And the reason I say Terry over someone like, say, Drummond is because the Pacers aren't going to be interested in Drummond. They're going to want young players with upside that they can develop and continue to build with their core. But even that, it's kind of a lot because you're essentially trading two first round picks for Heald given Terry was a first round pick last year. But you also have to factor in fit and the Bulls need to get rid of some of their backcourt players if you're also bringing in Buddy Heald. And I don't really see Terry fitting into the rotation anytime soon. But that does kind of lead me into my final point is the overall fit. If the Bulls do make this trade, how is it gonna work with the Bulls already crowded backcourt? Well, first of all, Heald, while he is primarily a shooting guard, he can play the three. He was on the wing a lot for the Pacers last season and in the starting lineup for them. And second, Heald would come off the bench for the Bulls. He would not be a starter for this team. 
but I actually like that because the Bulls need some solid scoring off the bench, reliable three-point shooting off of the bench. But even with that, I mean, yeah, the Bulls are most likely going to have to figure it out on the back end by way of another trade because between Zach Levine, Javon Carter, Kobe, Io, Caruso, and now Heald, either you're running an insanely small lineup or some of these guys are going to be out of the rotation. So with a trade like this happening, you would have to see subsequent trades made at some point down the line that would include maybe Io in exchange for more size because the Bulls still need depth of the four. Of course, by no means is any of this perfect, and I could be way off base in assessing Heald's trade value. That's why I'd never profess to be an expert and would make a terrible GM. I'm just an amateur fan like all of you that loves the game of basketball. So let me know what you guys would think and if you would want the Bulls to trade for Heald and how much you would be willing to give up for him. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.